Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this awesome looking Android box. This is Buzz TV's D Classic. Yes, this is more like you taking your 4500 series and also mashing it with E5 unit and you have D Classic. Now remember that this is the YouTube friendly version. If you want to watch the full version of this video, make sure you go to our website. Yes, it comes with 4 GB of DDR4 RAM and 64 GB internal storage plus OS 11 S905X4 chipset. I do not want to forget that this also comes with a remote that is going to be Bluetooth and Air Mouse. So that way you can totally take advantage of it. And on top of that, it takes two AA batteries. And I do not want to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family. Make sure you click the notification icon. So Select all in order to get notified once we have a new video out. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP. And don't forget to click the click the like button. It really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time. In here are all the components that are part of the box. It comes with this HDMI cable. It comes with this power cable, USB type C going to USB type A. It also comes with this little power adapter and this is 5 volt 2 amps created for Canada and United States. All the writing that you need to read is in the front and when you go to the back part of it where the USB type A connection is, you're also going to see their logo which makes it very personalized. It comes with two AA batteries which is done by Energizer. It comes with a awesome remote. Now this is their BT250 and it's inside of a plastic so it doesn't get scratched up. But this is how it really looks when you look from the top to the bottom. It's very big and it is really different than the older ones because you can see the design the way that they have placed it. And they have this little riddles to it. You can see that is really cool design. And when you open the back part of it is where the two AA batteries will sit and not AAA batteries so that means is you have a better chance of not going to lose that much of battery. Now this is their Bluetooth remote not IR and they have the similar design for IR but this is Bluetooth and when you look on the top you can also go into program your remote so you can work with your IR section to your TV and yes there's settings to it so there is little settings for your TV and on top of that you have the power button for the actual box directly so you're not going to mismatch it and then going in the bottom part of it you have the favorite button and more of the options are going to available but this is a lot better and a lot bigger so that way your hand can reach and you can go up and down to it that way you're going to be able to play with this remote way better or way faster than the other ones. Now you do have the volume up and down, channel up and down, you got the home button, just like the old ways, and you have the information button. The best thing that I really enjoy and I was missing from a few different models before was that you did not have a mute button, that was number one, and also the search button, which is on the top. Now, when you look through it, you will find a mute button, which is right over here, so that we can press, and the volume just totally disappears. And there is some settings inside of the actual box. You can play with that. But all the numeric buttons in the bottom, I really like that they have changed the actual design and the logo into blue. So you know that this is a Bluetooth remote. Plus it is IR. So this way it will work either way. Now this box also comes with this one page, which will give you all accesses that you need to learn your BT250 and also your classic. So that means this is user manual. But in order to get access to it, you need to use your phone and scan this part, which I'm going to show you right now. And you have to scan the first one, which is going to be for your BT250 and automatically takes you to the website, shows you the manual. Now through this, you're going to learn your remote on what you can and what you cannot do. Going through it, all of the steps are there so that way you can learn your remote very easily. Now the next part is going to be the manual for the actual box itself, which is called the classic. So you can go to it, that way you can see the user manual directly from your phone. So this way you know exactly how to connect it and also what's included inside of the box. Going down, you have some installation steps 
troubleshooting and also the remote itself on how you're going to be able to play with it which already have another page already shown you the next part will be the actual box now this is really cool because it's sitting inside of a little plastic so it doesn't get scratched up but once you take it out this is how it really looks it looks exactly like the 4500 series because of the sticker that they put on top and the little cuts that they have placed and also you have the buzz logo sitting on the side of it now this is a little sticker as you can see you can take it out and i'm not going to take it out because it looks really slick that way so i know that all of the information is written on top now here's the best part when you look around it you have these little cut edges if you look on the sides of it it looks exactly like the e5 even the housing is exactly the same but when you look in the bottom you have the name properly and also the model number is written really nicely. You have a sticker for the actual serial number MAC address, which I am blocking right now. But let's go from the top so the top is nice and shiny. Once you take it out, if you put your fingerprint, yes, it will leave your fingerprint on it. But when you go in the front, there's nothing except just the LED. Once you turn it on, it will be blue or red. You can see it from behind us. And then when you go to one side of it, you have ATF card reader. And then you have USB 3.0 and then one USB 2.0 connection, which also going to be used for OTG. And I do not want to forget, this can read up to 256 gigabyte of micro SD card. And then going to the back part of it, you have an AV port, which is good for resetting and not for your actual video. This will work for your audio. So you can hook up your headset jack onto this and you will be able to hear the regular stereo sound out of it then you have a gigabit lan then you have the hdmi connection and then you have an optical audio connection so you can connect it to older type of your stereo system then you have the power which is usb type c and then going on the other side there's nothing there but just a little power button so you can turn it on or turn it off by just pressing this and that's about it and then when you go to the bottom part of it, you have a lot of holes for ventilation. You have four little legs, which is all rubber. And this way, when you place it on the actual table, you want to move it back and forth. It will move because this does not really have any kind of riddles to it. But this will make it sit properly. And it, it will be flat enough so that way there's some airflow to go inside of it. So this way it can breathe. But this is how the box actually looks. Let's go ahead and connect it and then we're going to show you how it will look on the screen. Now when you put the battery you can see the light is blinking but you're going to see on this part now you cannot see this with naked eye but through your lens camera if you point it you do not have to record anything but when you press any button on the actual remote you're going to see that little blinking now that means is your remote is functional now when you turn it on for a very very first time you're going to see the buzz logo it should go into this animation And it should ask you to, for a very first time, pair your remote with the box. Now the remote is the BT250. So grab your remote and then as it shows on the screen, you have to press the volume down and the OK button for about three seconds. And you don't have to be very far from it in order to get it paired. So once you see it is going to start blinking, the screen will tell you that the remote is found and is connected. Now you can set up your box by just going to the welcome screen. Now here's a little update. If you look on the top where it says settings, you have a little one sign, which is a really cool thing. Now if you go down, it says that there is an update available. So let's go there, click on it. So that's just your notification. And then we're going to say to download it. You can see that right now it's 15% done. So once this is totally done and it's reboots, we're going to start checking out this box. All right, so here is the main screen as soon as you turn on the box. So from the top, you can see you have a bunch of shortcuts, which is going to start with the Live TV, VOD, PVR, and EPG. Now, if you look on top of it, you have their brand name. It's very nice and clean, by the way. And then you have the settings, 
time and also it shows you your weather widget now I will show you exactly how you can play with these but once you go to settings you have a little pop-up I really like this because now with the OS 11 they're able to give you a little one or two for any kind of updates or how you're going to be connected and more is all going to be here so you can see that if you connected with Wi-Fi you can show up also if your Bluetooth is on and off in this case you have to turn it on so you can use the remote and I will get there in a couple of seconds and also the connected ver connected part is going to talk about how this is connected to the internet one more part is it shows up update so you can check for update and also going to show you background yes you can change background on this box now if you really like us to make another video and show you some little tips and tricks do drop some comments on the bottom and that way we can show you how these parts are possible another part is called buzz utility which we're going to get this in a couple of seconds it is buzz utilities in order to cover everything except that you have all apps now i have to mention that these are just shortcuts yes you can add more by just clicking on that little plus sign and you can add one of these apps and you have to say yes and now it's added to the favorites you can go back and now it shows up in order to get rid of it just press the ok button for a couple of seconds you can move this by just clicking and moving or you can hold the press the ok button for a couple of seconds and you can move the shortcut or you can even uninstall the app from right here we're just going to remove it so that way we can play with it another part is all the apps that you have the button right here so you can click on it also going to show up in the bottom part which is all going to be available now we can also move these apps one by one to go to the front now i have to mention that while you're processing that when you reboot it's just going to go back to the original place so better thing to do is go in on all apps and you're going to see it right over here and that's how easy it is to process now these are not all the apps that are pre-installed we installed a couple of them so we can do this testing except that this is how it is possible now let's go through and check some of the apps number one will be youtube now as soon as you go through your app you can see that by default it is set up as 1080p but you can change it to 4k it should take a couple of seconds and the video should kick in right away and that means as you will be able to play your youtube on 4k as long as you have connected to a 4k tv then you can take advantage of this part which will look awesome now when you go to the geeky part you can see that right now this is running on 1080p and there is zero frame drop and you can see the maximum rate on this is 4k and 60 hertz or 60 frames per second that's beautiful on top of that the codex that is using right now to play this video is vp9 and opus and going down the colors are done properly too and there's more information underneath about exactly how this really works the next thing i want to go to will be aida 64 now AIDA64 has a lot of things in raw format which really makes sense to play with so let's go to system and under system the first part talks about device type which is TV the manufacturer is Dreadlogic this is modeled called Classic 5 in this case it's called the Classic going down you have 4 gigabyte of RAM there is a part for serial number which I am going to block and then going underneath of it a total memory and if you see how much is available right now going down the internal storage on this is 64 gigabyte but you can see that only free version the free part of it is about 50.82 the rest of them has been taken care of by the apps that you installed plus the os itself that is running in the background right now showing you all this and on top of that there's some for recovery bluetooth on this we know that it is 5.0 but it shows 4 plus because the board itself not going to communicate properly with this app next part will be cpu and you can see that this is quad core processor it is cortex a55 running on 2004 megahertz but cpu utilization is roughly about 18 percent it doesn't go over the scaling governor on this is scheduled which is really cool now display on this the native resolution is 1080p 61 dpi 
And the GPU on this is Molly G31, which is a single core processor running on 60 Hertz on landscape mode. Another good part is the OpenGL on this is 3.2, which means is if you install games on it, it will run it for you really smoothly. Right over here, you can see that it, it says that 5G network is supported, which is really cool. Now this do run Android 11, which is Red Velvet Cake, and then the API level is 30. And if you can see that when it was originally patched for security and the rest information is there. Now here's the best part. When you go to terminal, you will be able to see the temperature for your actual CPU, which is called SOC, and then also for DDR, which is your RAM and the battery. Well, this one does not have battery, but it's connected to electricity and it shows that it's very, very low, which is really good. Now, if it goes about 65 and above, then that means it is a little bit hot, but you can see that it is under 60, which makes it very nice. Another part is going to be Kodak's. So let's go in there and we're going to scroll all the way in the bottom first so that way we can capture everything and then we will go back up. So you can see that it is H264 is there, VP9, VP8. Now going up in pack 4, there's the H263. Going up, there should be one that we are looking for, which is called AV1 and it should be right over here. So there's Adobe Vision, which is really good and also AV1 right there. So that means is this box will work for you like charm, utilizing the actual OS and playing with your videos. A lot of codecs are part of this, which makes it very simple to play with your videos and more along the line for your live TV. Now, the next thing we wanna go to will be Geekbench. Now we have already processed this. So just to let you know, for single core, we received 152. And for multi-core, we got 510, which is really good for this type of box. Now, the next thing I want to go to will be DRM info. Now, under DRM info, you're going to see a few things. Number one will be your maximum DHCP level, which is HDCP 2.3, which is the latest one right now with all of the high-end boxes in TVs. Now, I have to mention that there are some apps that I cannot cover under this review. It will be under full review, which we have to cut from right here and we have to install it. But I have to mention that Disney Plus do work as 4K and also your Netflix will work perfectly on this. But you do require to have an air mouse remote, which is part of this box. The next part will be just playing some videos to see exactly if it plays it really good or not. So this is a 1080p video that plays it really nicely. And yes, there is a sound there. I just have to bring it down a little bit so I can hear my own voice while I'm capturing this. So there is no pause to it, which is a really good thing. That means is 1080p video will play like uh, really smooth on your network. Now this is a 4K video. Yes, as soon as it started, there was little pauses just so we can connect to it. This is not a 10 bit, but it has a lot of details inside of this. There are some details right over here. These leaves are going to work. And also there are some particles over here and they're going to see some birds going to fly. And that's what we're looking for to see where it's gonna freeze. And there is no freeze whatsoever. So I know that our 4K video that you're going to stream will work perfectly. And then this is going to be the 10 bit video. Yes, it plays it really nicely. And there is sound to it. And I'm trying to capture the sound with it. So this way we have some sound effect in the background, but I do not want to go over our own voice. But yes, it plays it really nicely. There's no pause to it. So 10 bit video or AV1 video will work perfectly with this. And this way we know that this box can do the job that what we are looking for. So the last part I want to bring is going to be your speed test. All right, so here's the results for this box using internet. Number one, what we did is we used the Wi-Fi, which is 5G. So this is the maximum number that I got was 386 for the very first time on download. And you can see the arc that went up a little bit and then it stayed still all the way through. And then for the upload, we have 52 megabits, but again, we have some devices hooked up and this is the number that I got, but you can see that it was going up and down and it stayed a little bit steady right around here for the 39.7, which is a really good number by the way. But if I scroll down a little bit, you can see that my idle time or my ping was very low. 
Now when I went for second time I got a better number which was 397 and you can see it arced better and it stayed still a little bit. So this way we got a really good number. When we try to do an upload you can see that as I have 50 megabits of upload I got it almost there and then it went down a little bit and it stayed steady for 49.3 again it's a really good number and if you look for the idle time it was a little bit higher than before so what we did next is connecting the landline now with this you can see that it arced really nicely and stayed about 860 which is really good for gigabit internet and it just stayed still now when we try to see for the upload it was okay which was giving us 43.6 and if I have to look for the idle time it was about 20 again it's a little bit higher than what we are expecting I did it a few hours later you can see the time on it and in this time we got 756 it arced a little bit and stayed down a little bit so that why that is why we got 756 and then when we did the upload it just went up a little bit to almost 50 then it stayed back down to 47.8 which makes sense but again this time the idle time was a little bit lower which is a lot better so this was the speed test and I have to mention that these guys actually done their job properly on the drivers using the Wi-Fi and the LAN module to make this work a lot better so once you get it it is mandatory for you to get a VPN, but this is really cool to make this work a lot better. Now, all the links will be available where you can order this from. On top of that, if you need more help or assistance, don't worry, you can ask at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out. Except that this was our take. I hope you guys like our video. If you do like it, click the click the like button. Subscribe button on the top, comment in the bottom. Always remember to visit our own website, which is exitex.info, which has full version of this video in there and thank you.